Hey, Newbie Dan here. I love T-Tracks. I use them for fences, clamping, and flip stops. These are all store-bought T-Tracks, and I talk about them in other videos. But instead of buying aluminum T-Tracks like these, you can cut your own with specialized router bits. You can cut a T-slot directly into your stock. Or if you want to add a little pizzazz to your project, you can make a T-Track out of something like red oak. Stick around and I'll show you all about it. There's lots of T-slot router bits available in different sizes and shapes. I'm going to cover the two that I have, which hopefully will give you enough information to choose the best bit for your project. There's links in the description below for everything shown in this video. Let's start with this Yonico router bit. It cuts a slot for use with quarter-inch hex bolts. It's pretty cheap, so if I ever need to buy a new one, it won't break the bank. It's designed to cut the T-slot in one pass. It's generally not a good idea to remove that much wood in one pass with a router, but I tried it a few times with red oak, and it worked. But when I tried it on a scrap piece of Baltic birch plywood, this was the result. And yes, I should have stopped before all the smoke. And flames. Just kidding. I love fire. So after the bit cooled down, I cleaned it, both the cutting edges and the shank, using some Rockler pitch and resin remover. Then I resharpened it with this diamond sharpening hone I got at Home Depot. It's 600 grit, also known as quote unquote fine grit. Just put the flat edge of the blade flat against the hone and drag it back and forth a few times, keeping it flat against the surface. You don't need any water or any other fluid, at least not with this type of hone. So now I'm ready to use the bit again, and from now on, I'm cutting the dado first with a quarter inch bit. I'm using these router setup bars from Craig to start out with a depth of about a quarter of an inch. And I'm using a feather board to keep the stock pressed against the fence while I make the cut. Then I raise the bit to about 5 sixteenths of an inch and finish the dado. Now it's time to put in the T-slot bit, and for that, I have to move my fence. So I use a couple of clamps to mark where the fence is before I move it. Then I put the Yonico bit in the router and replace the fence using the clamps to reposition it. I set the height to 3 eighths of an inch. Then I cut the slot and it goes quite smoothly. And here's what it looks like. As I said earlier, this Yonico bit is designed to make a slot for a quarter inch hex bolt. As you can see, the head of the bolt hits the sides of the slot so it won't spin when you tighten down a knob. None of the standard T-bolts I have fit in the slot, so this bit is only for quarter inch hex bolts, unless you want to grind down standard T-bolts. Here's the other T-slot bit I have, and it's from Rockler. It's significantly more expensive than the Yonico bit. This bit only cuts the slot, so you have to cut the dado separately. You cut a dado 3 eighths of an inch wide and about 3 eighths of an inch deep. So obviously, I'm using a 3 eighths inch bit. I set the height for the first pass to a quarter inch then 3 eighths of an inch for the second pass. Then I used the Rockler bit, set to a height of 3 eighths of an inch. And here's the result. This T-slot is designed for standard T-bolts, both quarter inch and 5 sixteenths of an inch. The slot is too wide for quarter inch hex bolts. They don't reach the sides of the slot, so they just spin. Even quarter inch carriage bolts won't reach the sides. So unless you want to use larger bolts, you pretty much have to use standard T-bolts in slots cut with the Rockler bit. I'll give a recap on both bits at the end of this video. The one problem with cutting my own T-slots is that I don't like how they look. They're okay, not horrible, but they're just kind of blah. I prefer the contrasting colors that come with using real T-tracks like this. I've been working on my new drill press table, and I like the look of the red oak edging I'm using. So I'm going to try and make my own T-tracks out of this same red oak. Here's my plan. My stock is one and a half inches wide and three quarters of an inch thick. I'm going to cut my T-slot with the Yonico bit a half inch in from one side. Then I'll cut the T-track to one inch wide, which means the slot will be centered in the T-track. The stock is three quarters of an inch thick, so I'll trim it to nine sixteenths of an inch. Why nine sixteenths? Well, because a half inch seemed too thin on the bottom, and 5 eighths seemed unnecessarily tall, so 9 sixteenths of an inch is the Goldilocks number. Just right. I'm going to cut the dado first with a quarter inch bit. 
As I said earlier, I want the center of the dado to be a half inch from one edge. So I'm using this digital gauge to help me set the fence. I'd really like to measure from the center of the bit, but I can't do that easily. So I'll measure from the back of the bit, which will add half the diameter of the bit to the distance. I position the bit with the blades pointing to the sides. Then I measure the diameter of the bit, and it's two tenths of an inch. So that means I need to set the gauge to half an inch, plus a tenth of an inch for half the diameter of the bit, and that comes out to six tenths of an inch. This digital gauge is okay, but I really wish it had a thumb knob like my calipers do. It's hard to get exact, and it moves when I turn the lock screw. But eventually I get it right, and I use it to set the fence. I'm going to use three passes this time to get a little smoother cut. I'll start with an eighth of an inch. It's easier to set the bit height with the Craig router bars than the digital gauge because I don't have to mess around setting the height of the gauge and the bars stand up on their own better than the gauge does. I'm using a thinner feather board this time so it doesn't get in the way of the push blocks. Now a quarter of an inch. And finally three eighths of an inch. Then I install the Yanako bit, set it to 3 eighths of an inch, and finish the slot. All that's left is to trim the T-track to 1 inch wide, and then 9 sixteenths of an inch thick. I actually made two of them, and here they are. I'll be removing the existing T-tracks on this new drill press table, and replacing them with the ones I just made. Here's a photoshopped picture to give you a general idea of how they'll look before applying a finish. But you're going to have to wait until I finish my new drill press table before you get to see the rest of the process. I know, that kind of sucks, doesn't it? But I gotta keep you coming back, right? As I said before, there's other T-slot bits available, but here's a recap of the two T-slot bits I have. The Yonako bit is inexpensive, so it won't break the bank. It has a quarter inch shank, so it'll work in just about any router. It can cut the entire slot in one pass, theoretically anyway. But if you use a smaller router, I definitely recommend multiple passes. You can use cheap quarter inch hex bolts for T-bolts. But the slot is too small for standard T-bolts, unless you want to grind them down. And if you prefer half inch shanks, you're out of luck. The Rockler bit cuts slots that work with standard quarter inch and 5 16 inch T-bolts. And if you prefer half inch shanks, you're in luck. But it's expensive. It requires multiple passes to cut the slot and a second bit. It only works with true T-bolts. Bolts larger than a quarter inch may work also. And if your router can't accept half inch shanks, you're out of luck. I wouldn't be surprised if there's bits out there that are better choices than either of these bits. So just do your homework, then pull the trigger and have fun. Well, that's it for this video. Keep an eye out for the video on my new drill press table. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up and consider leaving a comment. Thanks! Check out the description for links to products seen in this video. Just scroll down, click Show More, and scroll down until you see the links. And if you like what I do here, click that Subscribe button. And don't forget to ring that bell to get notified about new videos. Thanks!